Hello everyone, my name is Mohammad Ani Yusuf and welcome to today's webinar by Royal Cyber. We're going to be talking about uh, modernizing your data warehouses with Azure Databricks. So let us begin. So basically what has been going on in the last couple of years uh, is that we have seen a change in the types and the type of data that is being stored uh, uh, across different domains. Uh, previously, we had um, simple SQL databases uh, like SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres, and we had uh, ERPs and CRMs and entire e-commerce platforms built up on those. Um, but um, this was just limited to relational data. But what has happened as we have moved on is that we have got a lot more data to handle and it comes in all all forms so we have uh, data in the form of uh, images in the form of uh, text from social networks in the form of crms erps and we even have devices device data coming in from iot platforms so how do we tackle this kind of problem so the solution is that we would take a hybrid approach to combine the structure of uh, SQL databases with uh, the unstructured data from IoT devices or social networks. And as we see that uh, in today's world, uh, there is a growing demand for uh, utilizing data for multiple needs. So we have descriptive analytics, we have uh, diagnostic systems, we have uh, predictive modeling systems and even prescriptive uh, systems and at times some intelligent cognitive systems and all of these rely on how well you have been managing your data so uh, the performance so the performance of these systems is completely dependent upon how well uh, your data has been managed and that's why you need to continuously upgrade your uh, data management systems to be able to make the most of these uh, applications. This is where Azure comes in. The Azure platform has a complete ecosystem for data management, which caters to just about all kinds of applications. So um, in Azure, we have the Azure Data Factory for ETL pipelining. We have the Azure Import Export Service for prototyping and for uh, manually transferring any files that we might need. We have IoT hubs, uh, Kafka, Kafka streamings, uh, event hubs, uh, just a, a whole bunch of tools that are available to get data in, uh, to store data in the form of blobs or the Azure data lake, data lake platforms, or uh, if you want to stick with the uh, warehouse, relational data warehouses, we still have the Azure SQL data warehouse. And we can even, uh, make sense of the uh, data using uh, Azure ML or Azure Databricks or any other Azure applications like uh, Power BI. And all of this has been wrapped up into a single platform which is made available to you. So uh, a general uh, data warehousing architecture in Azure would look something like this. You'll have all of your unstructured data and your structured data uh, coming into the Azure data platform. And it might be through the Azure data factory or it might be directly through some ETL jobs into your SQL and NoSQL DBs. And what you do with that is that you would, uh, once you have the data in the staging environments, you store it in its raw format into a data lake store. What happens in the data lake store is that you can now make sense of this data using Azure Data Bricks or HD Insight or another step in your Azure Data Factory. And what will happen is that it, uh, these services would transform your raw data that you just pulled out from your uh, source systems into something that gives more meaning, which would uh, provide more insights or is, gives some value to your business so once you have that data in that form 
you can again use the same services to query uh, the required data and serve it to any application that you wish. So you can either store it for some future use in another uh, database or you can have a data warehouse which uh, is in addition to your uh, data lake and some companies do rely on keeping their current data warehouses along with the data lakes, uh, making the data lakes your staging areas. But uh, apart from that, uh, you can also visualize your data using some applications like Power BI, or you can use some third party applications. So in today's world, we have a lot of applications with regards to data management, and uh, we can see them in applications related to financial services or retail applications or automotive advertising security or even managing entire manufacturing plants in the form of industrial IOTs. So let's have a look at some of these applications. In the financial services industry, we can uh, make use of our uh, of the modern data warehouse to improve our customer analytics or improve our financial models or uh, better detect the risk of frauds and any threats that our systems might have or even uh, develop extensive and much more accurate credit reports with, uh, with the additional data that we are now able to cater with uh, in the unstructured format. And we can even uh, improve our marketing analytics and uh, adjust our marketing strategies accordingly. So adding the unrelational data with the relational data that we already have actually adds more to our modes to uh, actually adds more to our collective knowledge uh, so having more information in the form of structured and unstructured data through the modern data warehouse would add to our knowledge base regarding all of these applications and we can further improve uh, the models that we already have for them Even in industries, we can see that um, Azure, the Azure platform is quite uh, extensive. Uh, we can we can make use of uh, the data platform to better detect where which uh, which oil fields we should keep running or which should be uh, close. We can make use of uh, industrial IoT devices to run entire plants without much human intervention. We can optimize our supply chains to uh, predict the supply and demand that we might have in the future. We can improve our overall security measures regarding our regarding our secu uh, regarding our manufacturing plants or ident identifying hazardous uh, situations and preventing those hazards from ever happening. Or we can again we can either improve our marketing analytics and improve our overall revenue with the help of uh, the Azure Data Platform. Let us move on to the demo now. Okay, so let us begin uh, with our demo. For the purpose of this demo, we'll be using the Delta Lake platform, which is part of the Azure Databricks offering. Uh, what's great about Delta Lakes is that uh, it provides you uh, with uh, an additional uh, layer over your current data lakes which uh, helps you better manage the data within the uh, within your lakes. Uh, another great thing about Delta Lakes is that it is asset compliant. Uh, despite the fact that uh, Delta Lakes are completely denormalized and they do uh, they have fl a flat file system with no relations whatsoever. Uh, yet, uh, the Delta Lake layer does ensure that the asset properties are adhered to. So uh, let us begin. So um, in Delta Lake, we have something called a multi-hop architecture in which you can have, uh, in which you have uh, data coming in in the form of patches or live streams. 
and you have initially you have uh, ingestion tables these are of course delta tables stored as uh, delta files and this is the bronze part of your data which is completely in its raw format uh, then you have uh, refined tables which is the silver part of your uh, delta lake these tables are somewhat uh, processed and they can offer better insights and the final or the cold storage is your uh, aggregated data store this is the completely processed data or you can say these are the data marts that are ready to be served uh, to your application and all of this can reside on any of these three things you, it can be a hadoop hdfs file system it can be an azure it can be an Azure data lake storage, or it can be an Amazon S3 bucket. So uh, the data we are using for this demo is uh, uh, taken from the Lending Club website. Uh, it just uh, it basically just holds data about uh, previously taken loans and whether they defaulted or not, and how long these lo loans lasted, what their interest rates were and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, so let us start by importing some of the data from our file system. And, uh, and the file system over here is definitely the Azure Data Lake storage of generation two, uh, once we have loaded our data we can uh, read it in read it into spark and once we have read our data we'll just uh, create some uh, arbitrary tables or we can say the silver tables for a delta lake and you might see that uh, we have uh, the loan amount the funded amount some uh, the term of these loans their interest rates, their grades, and uh, their current status, address, and uh, what is the employment title of the person who took the loan. The great thing about uh, the Databricks notebook is that you can uh, be using a Python notebook, means that uh, basically it's geared towards uh, the Python language, but you can execute SQL and even Scala code in this. So for example, right now, if I wanted to execute SQL, I'll just uh, write this magic function line with uh, ampersand SQL. And if uh, I wanted to run some Scala code, I would uh, change this to ampersand Scala. So this basically just identifies that uh, what uh, language is the current cell using if we want to explicitly identify the language. By default, it would go to Python, of course. So uh, if you use SQL to basically explore our data, we can see that we have around 34,000 uh, loans from Arizona, uh, around 18,000 from Sacramento, and so on. So, uh, and uh, as you might have noticed that uh, we read the data in uh, Parkway format. So that was from our existing data lake, which was not previously managed by the Delta Lake. But what we can do is that we can convert these uh, tables into uh, Delta files, which would form the Delta tables. So I would just say that uh, drop my tables if, uh, if they if already exist and create new tables uh as delta files so i would have to specify that these are delta formats and i want to save them as tables so what this will do is that this will just replace my parkway tables with delta tables uh, essentially letting them be managed by the delta lake or uh, another way to do this if i don't want to drop my tables would be to uh, specify the mode uh, of uh, my delta files. How do I want to write them? Do I want to just append these files? Do I want to overwrite them? Or do I want to keep both files? Hmm. 
Okay, uh, so if I uh, just check my uh, current file system for any potential files that uh, have recently been created, I can see that there is a delta log that has been created and there has been uh, partitions uh, for each of my delta files that were created uh, as I'd saved them earlier. Okay. The other great thing about Delta Lakes is that they provide you full DML support. Apart from the DML support, we can see that uh, we can also use the Databricks notebook to create uh, in environment visualizations. And this can be done using basic SQLs. If I want, if I say that I want to see a visualization of loans by state, I can just run a group by query on the address state, create account, and uh, ask uh, and read it from my loan details uh, file, Delta file. And as you might have seen that to convert this into a visualization, I would have to specify what kind of visualization I want. So I can represent it as a bar chart. I can represent it as a scatter plot or a histogram or map. So for this particular visualization, we have used a map. Uh, okay, uh, let's say that uh, for some reason, I think the uh, data in Ohio was originally supposed to be assigned to uh, Indiana. So what we'll need to do is that we'll need to delete the values assigned to Ohio. And when we run the delete command, it uh, will execute it uh on my delta tables while ensuring asset properties uh what does what do we mean by asset properties at this stage is that uh either it will execute the complete transaction on all of the rows or it won't execute at all this is something that does not happen in unstructured data because if you interrupt a query on unstructured data midway it would have uh, already taken place like the transaction would have already committed midway. So if we validate this, uh, if all of the values were for Ohio were deleted, we can see that from the previous map, uh, Ohio does not have any data anymore. Um, and let's say if we want to just upgrade uh, some of the loans, let's say you decided to change the uh, grade of some of the loans from G to Z. Uh, Z. So, so again, we'll just run a query, uh, a select query where we would count the grade and uh, we'll just uh, uh, visualize it first. Once we have visualized our data, we can go ahead and apply the update. So we say that update loan details delta file and set upgrade, uh, set grade level to Z, where the grade level was initially G. And if we visualize this again, we can see that G has been completely removed and a new uh, grade Z has appeared. Similarly, we have support for uh, the merge into uh, query. And the merge into query is something that uh, has been a painstaking task for task for data engineers, uh, particularly those who have been using Hive or Spark, uh, since there is a lot of uh, pre-processing that has to be done. So um, let's say if, I, if we want to do this in Spark, we would have to follow a seven step process where we'll identify the new rows that need to be inserted. Then we'll identify all of the rows that need to be replaced or updated. And then we'll identify all the rows that are not impacted by the insert or update and then we'll create a new temporary view based on all of the three insert statements we ran above. And then we'll delete the original table and all of the associated, uh, associated files and rename the temp table as the original table. So this would uh, then finally create uh, our new table, which can be done with an insert into or merge into uh, query. So 
if we are working with delta lx we just need to identify the rows that need to be inserted or updated and we'll just use the merge command so let's say that as part of uh, our change data capture process we need to we need to add uh, new values to the loan so what we'll do is that we'll create just key value pairs for the address state and the count and we'll just uh, merge it with our uh, spark data frame so we say create or replace temporary, uh, temporary view and display the merge table and this is the new data uh, the same thing can be done with the help of the merge query so if we want to uh, merge the new data we will just say merge into loan by state delta as d and we'll say that using merge table as m and we'll just identify on which basis we want to create the merge and if we see the output we can see that this is this is uh, similar to what we did with spark uh one great feature about delta lake is that you can actually travel back in time and see what the state of your data was uh, a few weeks ago or a few months ago and this can be done in two ways you can either use a timestamp or you can use a version number for your del uh, delta files so if let's say if i want to review my uh, delta lake table history i can just use the describe query to say that uh, I want to see the history of my loan by state delta file. And I can see that two versions of this uh, files exist. Okay. And if I want to uh, check time travel by the version number, I can just uh, write that select uh, all the columns from my delta table with the version of zero. We can identify version one or version two if that exists and it will just fetch all of the data and i can just visualize it within this environment that what my data looked like uh, five six months ago and what it looks like now so if i change this into a visualization it can actually uh, give live insights into my uh, into the workings of my current uh, enterprise another way of doing this is that if i want to see the data as it was uh, prior to a certain date and time. So I'll just say that select all of the columns from my Delta table with the timestamp as of uh, 28 January, 2020. And my timestamp is 726. So it gets me all of these files which existed. Uh, so it gets me all of these rows uh, which existed prior to the state. So that was our demo and we'll now pause for some questions. So that is all from our side now. Hope you uh, enjoyed our session. Have a nice day.